hello and welcome back to the Be Free podcast. I am so excited to be back and um, full disclosure, full confession, I had written notes for this and I can't find them. I thought I procrastinated enough from not coming back and uh, seeing you guys, speaking to you guys. So I thought today is the day I am just going to go with no notes, no prep and see where we go. So I wanted this session, this podcast just to be like quite a short one, a little bit of an update about where I'm at, what's going on um, and a bit about why, you know, where I went, what happened. <laughs> um, so I am back today recording this. I am feeling so much better than I have done in months mentally. Physically, I am still experiencing some physical challenges. But yeah, I want to rewind the past year and just explain a little bit now with a bit of hindsight, lots of healing and um, yeah, trying loads of different things, just kind of where I was at. So I closed my business in October and um, closed down my membership site, stopped seeing clients, stopped taking on new work. Um because I just, I wasn't getting better. So at the end of last year, I experienced a number of things that at the time were challenging, but now looking back, they were probably quite traumatic. And I wasn't fully taken into consideration the impact that that had on me mentally, physically, emotionally. And to run through those things, so basically the end of last year, and I know I have spoken about these things in other podcasts, but I'll just condense, condense the story. But um, the end of last year, we were working towards, working through the adoption process, and um, I was experiencing pain in my breast, and I'd gone to the doctor, and the doctor had found a lump in my breast. So I got referred, and... Um, went to the hospital for a mammogram. It happened really, really quickly. And I have a bit of a phobia of, <laughs> phobia of hospitals, but I felt so protected that day and so held. And I felt my mom with me and I found angels with me. And my husband said to me, wow, like, I've never seen you so calm. And um, we went in and thankfully I was told later and then they did the mammogram. I just had to wait and um, met with a doctor who told me it was due to hormonal changes um, so the lump was nothing to worry about it was hormonal changes and it was just kind of the age that I'm at and following on from that my husband and I went for a coffee and we went to we actually went to a coffee shop at a church which is close beside us and I always just I love being in that space and I said to my husband that I think now is the time to stop this adoption process because another part of that story was um, we'd got told like two days before that they were cancelling the adoption, um, the next stage of the adoption until indefinitely into the new year because they didn't have, I can't remember what they said, they didn't have enough people or whatever to organise this certain part of training. Um, and we'd been pushing and pushing and pushing and I felt like I'd been pushing a lot through my life and I just decided you know what maybe this is the time this um you know <laughs> even the, the the what's the word the specialist at the hospital is telling me you know hormonal changes different stage of life and I thought you know what it's a different stage of life maybe that is not my destiny that that is not my path to fulfill so we made that decision to focus on an easier life, to enjoy our lives as a couple, our kids are older, to kind of embrace life differently. Now, at the same time, I was doing a lot of work in my business and had been for the past two years because of COVID and pivoting and I'd had my most successful year in business and everything was going really, really well, but there was so much pressure. I did feel a lot of pressure to continue to keep going to expanding to grow and I was working with a coach at the time and he kept saying to me Susie you need to stop you need to stop you need to take a break and I'm like no I'm fine it's all good he's like when did you last take a holiday I don't know he's like just stop um but of course I didn't I kept going 
Um, and then in the December, my husband, well, I got COVID and was bedded for two weeks. So I was off work. Then my husband got COVID and was hospitalized and on oxygen. Um, so he was in hospital for 10 days, I think it was. And we couldn't get in to see him because of COVID and it was over a new year and it, it was just, and I had some other things going on with um, one of my children, which was really quite stressful. And it just started off the year in a really crazy time. And then, <laughs> so, and then from then, um, we carried on, got to my, around my birthday and I wasn't feeling great. There was a couple of things that happened. Um, my perimenopausal symptoms were really dialing up. I decided I was going away um, up to Findhorn, which I absolutely adore to do some work and to start my next book. And on the way there, it was like a like disaster after disaster. And um, I ended up having to get towed because <laughs> the car broke down. And um, there was like all these different things happened to like, almost like try and stop me from going there. Um, my fatigue was so bad driving. I had to stop and just pull into the side of the road at one point and take a nap, which is really not me. And um, once I did eventually get up there, I managed to get the tow guys to drive me through. I had to leave my car at the garage. And um, so I was up there, no car, no family. And I just felt so alone and I ended up and I was in such a dark space and um I was on the phone to my husband and he was like just come home just come home and I'm like no it's okay it's fine and the next day I went for a walk and I'd never walked to the beach from where I was staying but I went for this walk and I kind of got a bit lost <laughs> and I um ended up finding this labyrinth and I walked this labyrinth and um Archangel Michael spoke to me and basically told me that I had nothing to prove. I needed to stop. And I was told the same. I went into a meditation space in Fintorn, which is called the sanctuary. Um, and I was in there and same thing. The angels were with me telling me that um, I'd, I'd done enough. <laughs> um, and I went, I did, you know, I found the beach, sat there, Wrote, wrote a poem or a meditation and um the next day or so I think it was two days my husband came up to pick me up and we had to go and get the car and came home so that was in the March and then I just wasn't getting any better my balance was getting affected I was so fatigued I was having to sleep between clients um my vision wasn't great um and then because of all these physical things that were going on I was getting more anxious and my mood was affected and then in, in May I decided um I attended an event by this point I couldn't drive or do anything my husband drove me to an event and I broke down at that event and what was coming through my mom was there and it was like this divine feminine thing and the ladies were so beautiful and holding me and hugging me and it was just like just stop just stop so oh, getting all emotional I took the month of May off work um and I had to pay some other people to come in and cover things for me obviously I'm self-employed so I don't work I don't get paid um and it ended up costing me a lot a lot of money <laughs> um to take that month off then I came back to work started trying to pick things up again and um it, it just the, the feel the wheels were just falling off of everything and I wasn't healing I wasn't getting better and I made the decision that I would just for my health and to focus on family time that I was just going to stop altogether so um I made that decision and again it was a very costly one because <laughs> I had to buy buy coaching clients out of contracts and all these things um so to make these decisions has cost so going from you know being the most successful year that I'd had in business to not being great paying out thousands and thousands um and you know a lot of fear around that a lot of fear around the stopping but ultimately, somewhere in my heart, I knew you're absolutely supported in this. You're absolutely supported in this. And then I started and began my healing journey. So I want to keep that for another podcast and let you know all the different things that I've been doing. So basically, um, 
I have discovered that I had um, a vestibular condition, vestibular dysfunction. So if anybody's ever had kind of labyrinthitis, vertigo, any kind of balance issues, I absolutely feel your pain. Um, so basically my eyes took over my balance system and um, what that meant was if things moved, I felt like I was moving. So driving was obviously hideous um, and things like that. So I had that, plus I had the hormonal issues, discovered that I had parasites. So I'm actually mid parasite cleanse just now. Um, it was just like a catalog of things, plus the trauma of the year before. And one thing I'll add, and I'll maybe just close the podcast at this point, but one thing I'll add was I felt that I'd got to the point where I had no purpose. I have always worked with manifestation. I have worked with the law of attraction. I've always been very focused on my goals, my future, where I want to be, being grateful for where I am. And I had lost all of that. I really was unrecognizable to myself, to my family, to my friends. And that made me so sad. But the reason for that was I was so focused on this adoption process for so long. And um, we'd built our whole life and our whole hopes and dreams around this um, child coming into our lives. And everything was kind of mapped out around that. The way the, way the business was structured, you know, with my membership site and all those things was mapped around that as well. And then when I, we'd made that decision to stop, I just, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I didn't know what lit me up anymore. I felt lost. Um, and I know many women experience this through perimenopause where you just feel lost. You don't know who you are anymore. You've lost your identity. And I 100% had lost my identity because my identity was so wrapped up in me being the coach, the anxiety expert, and inside, I felt like a fraud because I was experiencing anxiety and really dark depression at certain times of the month um, that I would uh, quite scary. And um, I would love to say <laughs> that today I made a vision board and I'm like literally beside myself with that. So that has taken me probably like the whole part of this year to create this year's vision board um and I love it and I'm very inspired by it if you watch this on YouTube I'll turn it around actually I can show you sorry for the noise if you're just listening this is my vision board I have made today um so I'm feeling inspired again I'm feeling more like me as I said mentally in a lot better space um I started HRT hormone replacement therapy there's no doubt that that has made a massive difference um so just working on the physical stuff now and a bit of mental stuff it's all good it's all good so I will be back and I will do the next episode I'm going to do on my healing the kind of practices I'm using the things I'm trying um but reach out to me let me know like what do you want to hear about what do you you know want to see I'm going to I have spoken to somebody a guest that I'm going to get on who I find really inspiring and I think you will too um, and she has some incredible practices um, that support her and her community. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to be back. I'm using a new podcast provider. So hopefully this works OK. The sound's OK and all that. But I'm sending you all so, so, so much love from my heart to yours. Thank you for listening. If you were a subscriber before, I appreciate you being here. Um, if you're new, then stick around. Who knows, who knows where this evolution is going? but sending you guys so, so, so much love.